What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Wanted to first thank you guys for the love and support on the tier list video I put out a few weeks ago. For those that haven't seen it yet, I'll link it at the end of the video. And please let me know in the comments what types of videos you'd like to see in the future. Today I'm going to show you how I utilize Bangalore's kit to its full potential. Whether you're a new player or an experienced Bangalore main, I'm pretty confident that there will be some stuff you haven't seen before and hopefully this guide helps you. Let's get right into it. When playing Bangalore, your playstyle should be pretty versatile and very flexible. I think for most of the game's life cycle, Bang was viewed as B tier and not super valued because she didn't do any one thing super well, but was decent at many different things. Master of None vibes. Obviously for a variety of reasons and many factors, that versatility is now super valuable and she's a lot more popular amongst both the casual player base and pro players. For the purposes of this video, and without going super in depth, I'll briefly explain some of the widely accepted team roles in Apex Legends. There's the Scout. The role of this player is to have the most aggressive positioning, to look for info for rotations and fights, and when taking fights they usually look to do entry damage and take off angles. There's the fragger. This player is usually positioned in the middle of the team and their job is to put out as much damage as possible in fights as well as float to whatever teammate needs help. And there's the anchor. This player has the most passive positioning and their role is to support their teammates. They anchor positions that their team has secured while the scout plays forward to get info and will usually utilize their abilities to res their teammates if they go down. Of the three there's an IGL or in-game leader. And on some squads there are even co-IGLs where one person is responsible for macro decision making like rotations and the other responsible for micro decision making such as shot calling and fights. In my opinion Bang is well suited enough to excel in any of these roles on a squad. She has enough escapability in her kit to be a scout and be the tip of a spear in team fights. She's obviously great in 1v1 situations so maybe her best role will be as a fragger. I fill this role most often with whatever squad I'm running with. And she works in an anchor role as well because her tactical and ultimate are well suited to aid teammates and you can observe the landscape of the battlefield from the rear in order to make the correct reads to best help your team. Whenever I'm solo queuing or playing with new people, I'll usually see what my teammates' tendencies are and kind of fill in the gaps so to speak and play whatever position or role that's needed in the squad. A lot is made about people crutching Bangalore and them being worse players because of it, and I have some thoughts on that that I'll get into later in the video. But in this aspect, being flexible and being able to play off your teammates in a multitude of ways is an acquired skill and major benefit that will make you a better player when putting time in on Bang. As for best loadouts to run as Bangalore, it depends on if you're playing pubs or ranked and to a lesser degree what role you're playing on the squad. My friends tease me sometimes for being an ultra sweat because one of my favorite loadouts to run is wingman pk but for good reason it really maximizes the effectiveness of her passive ability and keeps you really agile but also offers the most versatility and flexibility to be able to play any way or anywhere in general though it's true she excels with smgs and any weapon that can run a digital threat some examples off the top would be smg wingman ar shoddy ar smg the jen burton classic double smg or one of my personal favorites especially if you're playing ranked or as an anchor r99 and sentinel food for thought keep things organized i'm gonna break down bangalore's abilities one by one and explain the best ways to utilize her kit. We'll start with her passive ability, Double Time. Now the basics are that it activates while sprinting and when bullets or grenades hit or barely miss you, granting a 30% speed boost for 2 seconds. A quick tip I have is don't stand still. Bang is at her best when always in motion. And a pro tip I have to build off of not standing still, sometimes Bang's passive will serve as a pseudo wraith passive. You may not always be aware of where teams are or where enemies are because of what's going on in the moment or with Apex's audio issues, but when Bang's passive activates it should notify you that you're being shot at or targeted, especially if it's not coming from anywhere in your field of view. Keep that in mind. Mind. When fighting, I'll use double time for faster flanks, to close the gap on enemies, and to change angles quickly. There are obviously more Bangalores running around these days, but having double time in fights, especially 1v1 situations, is a huge advantage. People are generally not used to tracking bang strafe speed with the speed boost. That being said, if you don't already strafe while shooting your gun or fighting, incorporating it into your gameplay is a must. And if you're someone who is switching to playing bang and the speed boost is messing up your shots in close quarters combat, keep at it and be patient. It does take a minute to adjust and a tip I have is to keep it simple. Even just the slightest movement side to side can be effective in evading fire or making yourself an unpredictable target. Now as great and as fun as double time is, it's a blessing and a curse for sure. Common mistakes that even I'm guilty of at times are to think that double time can save you from and be used to evade all threats. That is simply not the case. You still have to play cover and you shouldn't stand in the open. Don't be the Bangalore that runs ahead of their team just to run back, tail between their legs, or be the one down first when it could have been avoided. My personal favorite is the Ego Chow wide swing. With double time you're able to wide swing corners quickly to get a jump on an opponent and then be able to get behind cover very quickly. Don't be the Bangalore that uses this in every engagement. It's a double edged sword and a risk even for the the best players. And lastly, I mentioned earlier in the video that I have some thoughts on players crushing Bangalore and her kit. A recommendation I have for any Bang main out there is to spend some time on a secondary legend that doesn't have movement abilities. For me, that was Ash. I felt her kit was very different from Bangalore's, and after feeling like I hit a wall as a player, I mained her for a while. So trust me when I say this, reminding yourself what it's like to play without double time will make you a better player. In my opinion, Bangalore's Smoke Launcher is the most versatile tactical ability in the game, but it's also one of the most difficult abilities to use correctly. Raise your hand if you've ever had a teammate say, I can't see, after you use your smoke. Yeah. 
me too. Some basics, it has two charges and can be used twice in a row even while healing. The cooldown is 33 seconds and upon landing the canister splits into three, which land in a line perpendicular to where it was launched from. It takes 23 seconds to evaporate. The canister's explosion deals 10 damage to enemies and here's the ultimate pro tip. You melee to cancel launching your Q. A big reason why Bangalore has risen in the meta the past few seasons is because of maps with wide open spaces that you need to either rotate through or fight in. Mooks are very useful when used as a rotation tool. And because Gibby isn't a staple meta legend anymore, Bangalore takes on some of his responsibilities in a squad, with smoke serving as a pseudo bubble. Provide cover for your teammates to heal or when they're in danger, or when going for a res. Obviously, do what you have to do to keep yourself alive, first and foremost, but don't play selfishly. Think about your teammates and how you can help them succeed, especially with your smokes. I like to think of Bangalore as a game manager, and what I mean by that is, it's your job to transport your squad from early to late game by any means necessary. At times, I'll anchor the squad in fights and watch my teammates in their respective gunfights. If I see that their health starts to diminish and they're still unloading their clip, I'll smoke them or the enemy to cut line of sight and deem the fight over. That's an example of what I mean by game management. Another straightforward use of her smoke is to launch it at the enemy and cut their line of sight on you instead of smoking yourself. I see many gamers not doing this as often as they should, so be mindful of that option in-game. Another application of Bang's tactical ability is to use it as a zoning tool. What I mean by this is, smoke areas where you'd think third parties may come from to protect you and your squad so that you can focus on the fight in front of you. In 1v1 situations, smoke in front of you as you're pushing an opponent to make them have to guess what area you're going to pop out to challenge them. For me at least, it always catches them off guard because I haven't seen any other players do this. In 1v2 or 1v3 situations where you have an opponent in front of you and an opponent is behind you, smoke your feet as you push the person in front of you to protect yourself from getting shot in the back. And in certain teamfight situations, I like to smoke right behind myself or my teammates as we're pushing a team so that if someone takes a lot of damage, they already know they have smoke they can play and I don't have to think about it and can focus on fighting. A creative application I often use is to smoke areas as a scouting tool. If there are enemies in the area I smoked, I will get hit markers to let me know how many enemies there are and what kind of shields they have. Bangalore isn't a scan character, but this is a pseudo recon ability that can be helpful at times. And Bang's smoke inflicts 10 damage, so if you're fighting an opponent and get them one shot, you can use your smoke to inflict that last bit of damage. I use this one a little more sparingly though, because it could inadvertently give the enemy cover to heal or cut line of sight for your squad. Now some common errors I see with the use of Bang smoke is smoking inside close quarters and blinding literally everyone, teammates, enemies, and yourself. Something to be mindful of at all times is to limit creating these types of situations. And if you're a controller player, be mindful of the fact that you don't get aim assist in smoke. I don't necessarily agree with the dialogue in the Apex Pro scene that Bangalore should only be played by MNK players for this reason, because if you're a controller player, kind of a flex and bragging right to say that you killed someone in your smoke without aim assist or a digital threat, but definitely something that takes some getting used to. Ultimately, I think Bang Q is very useful in many different situations. If there are any Bang smoke applications that I missed or some creative ways to use it that you came up with, let me know in the comments. Moving on to Bangalore's ultimate ability, Rolling Thunder. She throws a flare and several rows of missiles land sequentially in front of the flare. Each missile stays on the ground for 6 seconds before exploding. Since they land in rows, this creates a sort of wave of explosions moving forward from the flare. The missiles land in a 6x6 square with the maximum distance being 70 meters ahead from the flare. Each explosion deals 40 damage and slows enemies. The ability cannot damage squad mates, but it will still stun them. Something to think about when throwing your ult is ult placement. Shout out the boy Shatter because I learned this from him. I used to just chuck the flare in the general direction of the enemy and just hope for the best. But based on where you are on the map and where the opposing team or teams are, sometimes you're better served throwing it at your feet in order to maximize the utility of your ultimate. Read the landscape and try to consider how the missiles will fall and where they will fall based on where you throw your flare. Basically, be more intentional with how you call in the airstrike because it makes a big difference. Another common Bangalore player error is the classic panic ult. I'll even jokingly call myself out on it sometimes, but we've all done it or seen it happen. A Bangalore gets shot at, is startled, and starts panicking and unloading every ability in their kit. <laughs> In some situations, sure, that may be the best play, and admittedly, in some team fights, if I know I'm going to go down and my squad is still healthy and fighting, I'll throw Bang Alt as my final contribution. But there's a delicate balance between using and saving your abilities. Just because you have available abilities doesn't mean you have to use them at every opportunity that you get. The best applications of Bangalore's ultimate are as a third-party deterrent, to slow an enemy team's push, or as a zoning tool. It definitely can be used offensively, however, it's very situational and should be used sparingly. It's not as oppressive as many players think it is, and often it'll slow your team's push by inadvertently stunning your squad. We don't want that. Instead, if you're using it to initiate a push, wait for the first row of missiles in front of you to explode, then run in with it to avoid being stunned. Or if you're in an open area, veer far left or far right just out of the ultimate's range to get an angle. And in some situations, an option is to run past it before the missiles land or start going off. But the most important thing from my experience is to be very communicative with your squad. Let them know if and when you're throwing your bang ult, and if there's an incoming bang ult, let them know it isn't yours. It'll make life so much easier for all parties involved, trust me. All things considered, there's definitely a skill gap to using it correctly, but it really is is one of the most helpful abilities in the game. Lastly, I'll talk to you guys about skill expression. She can be flashy and there's definitely a unique swagger to great bang gamers, but she's definitely less flashy than like Wraith, Pathfinder Horizon, or Octane for example. 
and I've heard many people say that her skill ceiling is low, but that really couldn't be further from the truth. In many ways, how you impact a match as a Bangalore gamer is intangible. There are no stats or metrics to define the number of third parties you prevented, how many times you saved your squad mates from being knocked, or how well you zoned areas when fighting a team. But that being said, you do have the ability to influence and control the battlefield unlike any other legend in the game not named Watson. Shout out my boy Wallace! And like I mentioned before, you're the game manager. It's your job to keep the squad alive and transport them from early to late game. Bangalore is underappreciated and an underdog, but that's okay. That's why I like her, and I'm sure that's why many of you like her as well. They ain't sleeping anymore though, huh? Remember that you control the flow of combat and you're fast as fuck, boy! Let me know if any tips I provided make a difference, and I'll see you in the next one. They just